Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16 releases in just a couple of days. And I thought we'd talk about the last minute changes, features, and updates that Apple has added with iOS 16 release candidate. Also, I thought we'd talk about if iOS 16 is ready based off my experience using it full time on my 13 pro max and your experience based off the YouTube community poll. There's over 15,000 votes at the time of this video and 220 comments. So we'll take a look at what you had to say about it a little bit later in the video. Now, the first thing is if you're running iOS 15 or 15.6.1 and you go to software updates, there's a new image here that says, see what's coming in iOS 16, learn about new features that help you collaborate, communicate, and personalize your iPhone. So a lot of people are seeing this. Many people have been asking me about this and you'll see if you just go to software update in your settings, you should see it. And this phone's even on iOS 15.7. So this is just popping up. And if you want to learn more, tap on that little icon there. Now, one thing Apple has added in iOS 16 RC is only available for the iPhone 14 pro and pro max specifically a new boot up chime. It actually will sound off when you're booting up or when you're turning it off. And this is great for accessibility users. You can hear it as nine to five Mac actually posted the sound. So if we tap on this here, let's turn up the volume here a little bit, do it again. We'll do it one more time. So that's actually the new sound that they have for when you're turning off your phone or booting it up. So it helps accessibility users know that they've actually turned on their phone. Also, there's a new find my animation for that dynamic Island on the iPhone 14 pro and pro max. So that's something that's a little bit different now within accessibility. There's a new update. Now we won't be able to see this until you have the AirPods pro second generation or AirPods pro two, but under accessibility, if you have the new AirPods pro, these are actually AirPods pro first gen. One of the new features is the side will be touch sensitive and you can just swipe to adjust the volume. There'll be a new setting in accessibility to access that and allow you to change the swipe duration so that maybe you're not accidentally moving it up and down. So that's something you'll have in your settings, accessibility, AirPods and beats, and then under your AirPods settings, you'll see that. So you'll be able to actually change that duration. So a lot of these things we can't see unless we have new devices though. There's also some new small icon changes. So for example, the new Apple watches, the icons have been updated. So if you have one of the new watches, when the Apple watch ultra comes out, those icons have been updated in here and many other icons, such as the car crash detection icon on iPhone 14 models, AirPods pro second gen icons, when you connect your AirPods and then the backtrack icon for Apple watch. And I showed this in a different video. So if we go into this, we're in sleep mode. I wanted to show you a feature with that or a bug I'm having with that. But if we go in here, go into the compass, you'll see we have the backtrack option. So you can start backtrack and this actually allows you to find out where you've been so that you can get back to where you started. And so those icons have been updated to be added within the watch settings as well. So it's great that Apple's updating all that. Of course they have to do that last minute as there's that Apple event, they announce everything. Then they push all those out into the iOS updates. Also, there's some settings for eSIM. So now that the iPhone 14 models in the United States are eSIM only, we've been seeing some of these settings in our cellular settings where we could convert to eSIM. And it's something that we didn't know why it was there, but now we do. So in cellular, you'll be able to easily convert to eSIM. And as you can see, it's saying, get ready for your new iPhone. That's because the new iPhones are coming out and it will pop this in here automatically if you've ordered anything. So that's something that many people should be seeing now. It's pretty typical. Anytime you order a new Apple phone, it will just pop up in your main account since you ordered it with whatever account you're using. Additionally, within the settings more for the iPhone 14 model. So not just convert to eSIM, but also there'll be settings for always on displays. So why Apple isn't bringing that to the 13s? I know it's because they are going to ramp down the Hertz down to one Hertz, but it's something I would love to have them bring here, but there'll be settings to turn off the always on display if you don't want to use that. And there'll also be settings for the new camera action mode. So within camera, You've got a new action mode on those cameras in the iPhone 14s. There'll be a button for that. Those features do not come to older phones. They're only on the new phones. Also, there's many new actions for the dynamic Island. And many people have been asking me, will the dynamic Island when you're playing a video on YouTube sort of obstruct that view. And I don't believe it sticks down below the notch, but we'll have to sort of see that when we compare them in person. So once I get my hands on the iPhone 14 models, the 14 pro and pro max, we'll compare it with the notch, see how it works with video and see if it actually obstructs based on the ultra wide video that I post on YouTube.
So a lot of little changes there in the code for just different things that are coming out. You're not going to see those unless you have the newer version of the iPhone though. Apple is now sending out emails to Apple care plus subscribers. Whereas if they break their phone, maybe you crack the glass twice. The third time you'd actually have to pay an additional fee. That's now gone. Now it's unlimited before you had two incidents within a year. Now it's unlimited. So that's great. I think it's the way it should have always been. And if you're someone that actually breaks your phone often, or maybe you just had a mistake a couple different times, this should now be covered at no additional fee. So it's great that they're actually doing that. Now we need to take a look at how iOS 16 RC is versus iOS 16 beta eight iOS 16 RC verse beta eight or verse iOS 15.6.1 seems to be pretty good overall. There are still some bugs in it though. One in particular, you may have already noticed I had sleep mode where I mentioned that before. One of them is if I turn off sleep mode, you'll see I'm in do not disturb mode. The lock screen still acts as though I have sleep mode turned on. So you can see it's sort of an always on display look. And this again makes me think, why couldn't we have always on display if we wanted it maybe on a nightstand, for example, on the iPhone 13s and 12 series, but this won't turn off until I change my alarm. This is an odd bug. And if I change this back, hit done and just change the schedule. It will turn off, switch to do not disturb, and we're back to normal. So you'll see it's switching back between do not disturb on my focus mode by itself for some reason. I'm not sure why it's doing that. It's a bug. I've rebooted the phone and it's still doing that. So there's definitely some odd issues here and there. So you'll see even in the top left, it's doing it over and over. So if we turn this off, we'll just go in manually, go into here, see if it will let us. So it's acting very odd. So let me change this again see if I can just turn it off or switch it to here. We'll change the schedule and it's still doing it. So let me see if I can fix this. We'll just change it to earlier and again, still having this issue. So let's turn this off altogether. Maybe turn off sleep mode and see if it fixes it. So we'll turn off a sleep schedule and it's still causing the problem. So let me see if I hard reboot this, if it goes away. Now it's booted back up. It seems like the issue's fixed. My lock screen is now with a normal brightness. So there's definitely a bug. And one thing I noticed when it was doing that, the phone got really hot while it was doing that. It's very warm right here. And most of the time I really haven't had an issue on this phone with heat, but you'll see it's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 102 degrees, 104 degrees. So it got quite warm. I hit see 105, 106 degrees there now. So it's quite warm using the FLIR thermal camera. So normally it doesn't get very hot, but this time around, it's definitely very, very warm for some reason when it got stuck in that sort of bug boot loop. So definitely an issue there. Also one thing to note, let me turn the volume down here. If we go into music, we'll just play a song. When you're playing a song and we go to the lock screen with the little album art here, the way it drops in, I think is still glitchy because they're accounting for maybe the new dynamic Island where it would drop from there to there. So maybe that's why it seems off, but they still haven't fixed this. So you'll see here again, as it drops in, it doesn't look like it's the correct animation. Maybe it's accounting for the time when it drops from up here to down there. So it just may not be timed properly on other devices. Also haptic touch. Many people are complaining is not strong enough when you're typing. It is something I'd like to see them adjust, give us a little bit more stronger haptic touch, but that could be because of battery saving reasons. Maybe if you're moving that motor faster or harder, it's a linear motor. Maybe it causes a problem or causes more battery drain. So that's something that I think I'd like to see. It's not a problem. It's just something I'd like to see adjustable. Most of the complaints I've seen with iOS 16 RC have to do with apps though. Most people are saying apps aren't working properly and many of them should start to be updated fairly soon. On Monday, when iOS 16 releases, we should see a ton of different app updates. I know TikTok was already updated and then hopefully we'll start to see live activities eventually, probably around iOS 16.1. We only have it for the alarm clock. And if we turn on a timer here, hit start, we have it here for this, but not really anything else. So hopefully we see that with different sports scores and different apps, all those different live activities look great. Overall connectivity seems to be pretty good. I do have some issues from time to time when I'm driving and it's switching between different cell towers. I think that's what the problem is. Most of the time it's pretty good. And if we turn this off here and maybe we'll go to speed test, we'll just test it quickly. We'll hit go and see what our download speeds are. You'll see, I have two bars of 5G UC 
and it's pretty good for just two bars. So it goes up and down. You'll see we're about well, 52 megabits per second. Now we're getting up to about 60 or 55 to 60. So not real bad given that we're two bars only, and then we're in the middle of a brick building and then upload speeds are pretty good about 17 megabits per second. If I went outside, this would probably be better. So it's also based on weather and more. So it seems to be pretty good overall. I haven't had too many issues other than when switching between cell towers and Apple hasn't updated the modem in a while. So that definitely was a little bit concerning, but it looks like it's going to be the same modem as well. Now this leads me to, should you install iOS 16? Well, if you want all of these features, then absolutely. There's always bugs in software and Apple always is working to get that fixed. With the beta profile installed, I misspoke in the video the other day with the release candidate. I do have the feedback app still, and it's still there. So the notes and everything else are in here for watch OS nine. And yesterday, Apple released Mac OS 13 Ventura beta seven. So that's finally out. And we have different notes for TVOS as well. So it's great that they're updating that, that we still have the feedback app. And if we're still having issues, we can report it. Once you delete that beta profile though, then it will remove the feedback app. Now, if you're wondering if you should uninstall the beta profile to move over to iOS 16's public release, well, most likely this is the public release and you just had it early. However, if you remove the beta profile now, you'll be able to install it if they do update it to a different build number. If the build number stays the same as iOS 16 RC, well, then you just had it early. So there will be zero difference between this version and the version that comes out to the public, as long as they're the same build number. However, if they're a different build number, you'll just have an update like everybody else. If you want to install that beta profile, but if you want future betas with iOS 16.1, well, then you need to leave that beta profile installed. So it's really up to you. Either way, you'll get the public version on your phone one way or another, whether it be in the beta form, which is the same thing you just had early or you want the future betas iOS 15.7 RC released this past week. And I'm surprised we actually didn't have a release of it yet. So maybe on Monday or sometime this coming week, since it's a release candidate that will keep older devices that are no longer compatible with iOS 16, such as the 6s plus here that will keep it updated with the latest security updates and then compatibility with different things such as AirPods pro second generation. So all of those things should be included in that. Otherwise it's not a major update like iOS 16 is of course. Also we're waiting for iOS 16.1 and based on what Apple did last year, they released iOS 15 and then the next day they released iOS 16.1 beta one to iPhones. So we could see something like that. I would expect a bunch of different updates this week, of course, with iPhone 14 as well. So iPhone 14, if you picked up one of those, of course, come out on Friday, if you were able to get a pre-order. So those should be available very soon. Of course, with 14, 14 plus comes in October, then 14 pro and 14 pro max are all on Friday as well. So that along with new Apple watches, the Apple watch ultra launches later, as does the AirPods pro second generation. Now, as far as battery life in this, since this should be the final version, it's okay. Some people say it's really good. Others say it's not. So if we go down to battery, battery health, I'm at 98%. That's pretty good. It's a year old now at this point. And over the last 10 days, you can see here yesterday, I had five hours and 39 minutes of screen on time, two hours and 55 minutes of screen off time and used about 70% of my battery. It varies greatly day to day, but it's not as good as it was quite some time ago. Now that's not the case for everyone though. Abishek sent in his battery life. So let's take a look at that. And on an 11 pro max, you can see he had four hours of screen on time, four hours and 26 minutes of screen off time and used under 50% of his battery life. So it's actually, doing quite well. And it really depends on the apps you use. If you're a heavy game player, of course, it's going to drain the battery more quickly. If you're using the camera for video, it's going to do the same. So overall it's okay. Battery. Many people say it's as good as 15.6.1. I'm personally not seeing that. So hopefully it will improve, but there are those odd bugs I showed you earlier. As far as performance, performance on older devices seems to be fine as well. I really haven't heard any complaints about that. In fact, most people say it's actually faster. So whether you're just scrolling, ProMotion is nice and fast on the newer devices, no complaints there. And no weird issues with green tint or red tint. I really haven't heard about that in a very long time. So that's a great thing. So performance seems to be good, whether you're going into different apps, just opening something simple, I'll go over here into music. I haven't opened this today. You'll see we're in low power as well, not low power mode, but it loaded nice and fast. 
performance seems to be just as good as it was on iOS 15. So people concerned about them downgrading performance, I wouldn't be concerned about that. Now let's take a look at the YouTube community poll and some of your comments. And one thing to note is YouTube actually reloaded on me. So RAM management seems to be a little hit or miss here. I didn't do a whole lot. You saw the whole video just going through the different things I showed you and it had to reload YouTube, which was a bit surprising since that was only about 20 minutes ago or so. And you'll see that 35% say that it's great. 3% say that it's terrible still. That seems to be pretty consistent. 10% say it's okay, but still has bugs. 46% are using iOS 15.6.1 or earlier and 5% are using something else, whether that's Android or an earlier version of iOS. And you'll see compared to last time, 12% said it had bugs now 10% and we're still missing about 7,000 votes compared to the previous week. But let's take a look at what you had to say. I've selected a few different comments randomly. Let's take a look at these. Tech Muse said, my iPhone 13 battery does drain a little quickly, although this is to be expected and seems to be the same as beta seven and eight. I still have a few issues with the phone lighting up as if I've tapped it when I haven't and I have raised to wake off. And sometimes the wallpaper I've set for when I'm on the sleep focus can be a bit laggy. Otherwise it's fine. Valentino said, really good sudden battery improvement and heat management is getting better, but still gets warm with some apps in particular iPhone 13 pro max. Jason said iOS 16 RC and my iPhone 12, no problems. All apps working just great. The OS is super smooth, much better than iOS 15 was this time last year. Although battery life doesn't seem as good as it was on the last iOS 16 beta before RC. Jay says I'm on the iPhone SE second gen and the performance has notably increased. Every button feels more responsive and apps open a lot faster than before. Battery life has increased tremendously. Even while gaming, I'm barely dropping a percent. Love this update so far. As you can see, the overall experience is quite different depending on the phone you have, how you're using it, what apps you have installed, what settings you're using, and much more. But overall, people say it's an improvement when it comes to performance, even on older devices, as you just saw there, it seems to be much, much better. So that's a great sign. And I think it will be an improvement for many people. But overall, I'd love to hear your thoughts on iOS 16 and if you're installing it when it comes out on Monday. And also if you picked up an iPhone 14, any of those models, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, it'll be linked in the description as it always is. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.